All right, guys, welcome back to another video. I am here on Zoom, hence why I've got my laptop open, and I'm with Dara, who is actually someone who is inside my Six Figure Accelerator program. So Dara's been in the program for quite some time, pretty much since the get-go of when I first launched it. So we're just going to have a quick chat. It's going to be a very informal interview, me asking some questions, Dara just sharing his, his experience, his story so far. And yeah, Dara, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for having me, Adam. Really appreciate uh, being here anyway. So thanks for this. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Sounds good. So mm. I suppose there's no better place to start with your story of how you actually got started with marketing, with SMA, and with your agency. So if you want to give us a bit of a backstory, and we'll just get into it from there. Yeah, so um, I'm an apprentice aircraft engineer. That's what I do when I left school. Um, I'm just in my final year now um, with a uh, great company and all that, but uh, kind of obviously locked down here um, this coronavirus here, and I kind of had a bit of time. Uh, we were took off over two weeks, um, and you know it gave me a bit of time to just reflect uh, with just how things were really. Uh, I kind of thought about my future, which I never really did, um, because at that time with how things was and how travel was, uh, I thought I'd lose my job. Um, me being an apprentice forced to go so I was just a bit worried in that aspect of things and kind of from a very young age I always wanted to you know own my own business or you know make something or create something nothing basically um, so I had a bit of time to research that and you know I looked at everything really and um, I looked at dropshipping I looked at forex I looked at you name it, any kind of online business or you know side hustle as people say I was looking at and again people are reaching out to me saying um you know do this do this you know and i just was a bit lost kind of and then i jumped on tiktok uh the tiktok kind of trend say is that happened over there uh, covid you know obviously became a massive part of people's lives and you know started following people and then i realized there's lots of people kind of talking about their how they make money or what they do and i came across you um and basically, I just kind of watched your content for a while, uh, flicking through it, and I kind of basically just said, look, I'll reach out. I never really reached out to anyone before ever, um, and I just said, I'll reach out to you. And you replied fairly quickly to me and just had a chat, genuine chat. I was kind of just asking for a bit of advice um, about kind of what you do. Um, not really what you do, just about business in general, because I didn't really have an in-depth kind of view of what you actually did and then we got onto the conversation of SMA uh, and that's really how it kind of all started. Cool man, cool and like before you starting off then obviously you had looked at everything right so you looked at all dropshipping forex and all of that so like was there one like standout reason of why you went with SMA in the end? Um, well look there was two mainly um, reasons why I went with SMA so obviously one reason was because of the kind of niche aspect and I knew you could kind of pick a niche that you could be interested in really. So, you know, me in particular, I'm real interested in cars, bikes and stuff like that. So I was, you know, drawn to it because I could kind of shape my business around that and be involved in that every day because I love looking at that stuff. I love being involved in it. Mm -hmm. um, and two was a big trust thing. Um, I felt like I trusted you a lot um, before I even messaged it. Um, I just thought you were a bit genuine. You know, compared to, you know, some people reach out to me and, you know, I say nine out of every 10 people that are going to reach out to you or chat to you on, you know, online are genuine people, you know, for that one person who's probably just trying to make a quick book out is, yeah. you know, it just gives it a kind of, the internet a bit of a bad name, but it's not really a kind of, there is a lot of genuine people who want to help you. Um, so I trusted you out of kind of a lot of people that are ch chatting to um, and that's really how why I picked SMMA was because of then those two real factors. Um, as we kind of went on, we I obviously joined the course, learned a lot, and you know picked a slightly different service to you. But um, you know, and obviously met people who are doing those services as well, made some great friends and stuff like that. So that's uh, really it that's why <laughs> oh, and cool and yeah i think they're pretty good reasons like you know of yeah one i suppose you knew you're gonna probably enjoy it because you could work with an industry you genuinely yeah. like 
but obviously yeah having having trust in the person you're going to get mentored by or coached by is it's so important because like you said most people are legit right there's not a huge amount of people that will just take your money and run but there is the odd person out there so i think when you are picking someone it really just is do you trust the person will you get value from them and can you relate to them and if you can it's probably going to be a good decision um cool man so like when you were starting, like you were pretty much starting from zero, right? Like you didn't really know, you were new to the whole make money online. You were new to marketing yeah. as a whole. So like, was that a struggle? I'm sure it was in cases of you just not knowing much and then actually starting off with SMMA. Yeah, 100%, uh, 100% a big struggle and a big uh, kind of limiting belief I had to be. Um, I basically, never really knew you could make money online and um, i knew of kind of shops online and stuff like that but it was never really uh kind of i think when i was younger i was kind of programmed in a way because my dad had his own business and um, he had to close it down because of family reasons and stuff so he had a very kind of physical manual labor working really long hours and i think that i viewed you know becoming yeah that's how you became successful was through hard work graph you know yeah. back break and work which is what he was doing um and then that, that kind of ingrained to me i kind of figured out at a young age what money was and what we could do i started working at you know eight years of age on a milk ground just helping a, a, a local milkman collect money um, and stuff like that and we just was work mad in that way i just done physical labor jobs you know real intense kind of pulling, dragging, lifting. And I said, that, that's how I vision, you know, how you became successful is because you just worked hard and worked as hard as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, lockdown came as, and everything slowed down. Um, my work slowed down. I took, uh, I had a few jobs and I only, only had the one, the apprenticeship, which I was focusing on. And that slowed down a bit due to COVID. So basically, I just was like, right again looking at kind of the how it was and what the situation I figured out people can make money online and that's the kind of starting step in relation to marketing i hadn't really a clue what smma was i knew what marketing was as in you know i know friends who were you know went to college to study marketing and stuff like that yeah. and i knew it was to you know gear your your company or your product to you know people and stuff like that so um when i kind of jumped into what i was learning and learning about marketing you know i think it was just that initial step of well, okay you know i think because i didn't study it in college or i didn't that was a big limiting factor for for me but you know there's so much content courses good people out there that can help you and you know i think marketing has never really changed as a foundation you know since it was you know year hundreds and hundreds of years ago when it was originally formed it's the same you know key concepts at the root as it is now whether or not kind of it is to do with you know whether you're using social platforms or you know whether you're doing it all the kind of the old-fashioned way through newspapers it's all the same kind of structure that you use granted a small bit different because of technology and it's going to advance again you know whether we go into a different form of advertising but it's going to be still the same the foundations are always going to be the same and you're always going to build it from there basically and um, so it's just a case of learning as much as i can reaching people reaching out to people who are in what i do um you know they were very helpful then just constantly looking at engrossing yourself in the content um of marketing um you know and i don't think you need to be an absolute expert in everything marketing because you don't need to be some businesses don't need that aspect and some need a, a wider range for what i do is paid advertising so you know i'm very that's what i stick to or that's what i know that's what i've studied for you know the past year um, and i'm engrossed myself heavily in so um and obviously took some courses as well to do with that uh, so that's what i think once i got over that limiting belief that i had that i need to be you know an expert in everything you know i think it, it came fairly easy then you know you start looking and 
you start noticing things even outside when you're driving home you notice like things and strategies that people use so that's really it uh, from the that sort of end of things for me anyway <laughs> cool and cool yeah yeah and i think that's a really good point of like marketing hasn't really changed like yes it's yeah. changed on the surface level of oh you're running facebook ads now whereas 10 20 years ago you maybe not have been running facebook ads, right it's trying something completely different which i think is a very key point because like a lot of people see marketing and smma as like oh it's going to become saturated or oh it's going to die right and you know businesses are going to just do the marketing themselves but it really just comes down to the fact that like marketing is always going to be there it's just going to be in a different form and as long as marketing is still there and there's still businesses that need customers they're always going to want someone who can do it for them not every business owner wants to get their hands dirty not every one of them wants to learn facebook ads right and again it's like even if they wanted to it's that time like do they have the time to do it probably not are they super skilled at it or would it take them six months to actually learn it all maybe so like there's there's just so much like there's so much opportunity with not even just smma but just offering marketing you know whether you want to run an agency you want to do freelancing or you want to have even like consulting business there's just so much inside that marketing world where like to be honest i don't think it's ever going to die unless there's like this time where ai does everything but even at that stage i think it's going to be humans interacting with ai not ai yeah. doing absolutely everything so a little right yeah. there but i think there's there's huge potential with marketing so if anyone's watching this and you're you're thinking oh it's going to be gone in two years or three years it's not trust me it's going to be still yeah yeah 100 and then um, that was one of my fears definitely yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i think everyone kind of thinks that um i would say like it is true of specific business models like if you look at for example drop shipping will that die potentially you know that may not be around in five ten years but when you look at something so core like that marketing that act of marketing is definitely still going to be there and um i suppose i'm kind of like moving forward through it then so obviously like you said you you join my program you kind of first had the whole mindset shifts that you had to go through of okay you can make money online and i can do it with of course it's hard work but not manual labor like literally picking up things and hauling stuff yeah. around so like after that then like you mentioned you went through a couple of courses and things you know getting up to date with facebook ads grossing yourself in the whole process and like was there any turning points then let's say when you got maybe your first client where you had even more of those mindset shifts and the reason i say that is because you know obviously we could sit here and talk about like strategies tactics and all of that good yeah. stuff but i think the mindset shifts really are those things that like are the toughest lessons to learn and they're kind of the hardest things to go through so yeah. i'd love to hear on your part let's say if it was sudden in the first planes like what was that shift how did it feel and and what has it been like since that actually happened yeah, um, definitely. I think mindset has been a massive role, and I suffered a bit with it as well. Um, definitely around just before Christmas, I had a real kind of, I was really down with myself, really, because I was, you know, engrossed. I was learning every night. I was doing the work, um, you know, reaching out, doing, you know, I was on that steep learning curve of, mm. you know, building up an agency, and um, I just wasn't getting results i wasn't you know i just felt a bit like oh this doesn't work you know and i had to kind of really i reached out to you just it was just before christmas and i said you know i don't know what i'm going to do i'm all over the shop with with it um i'm doing this doing this doing that and i can't really put put a an exact point when my mind shift um mind shift change or that happened sorry um i can't really put a you know uh point out an exact date when i changed how i thought about it um you know having you there as a support was great you know um i think you helped me through that stage 100 percent um but i just i was doing you know looking at the you know how to be productive and affirmations and all and stuff like that and just none of it was working because i felt like i was saying oh i'm going to be this you know if i was saying an affirmation or saying you know looking at a quote it wasn't doing it for me so i am a very visual person and um, so i started looking at you know printing stuff off uh screen tables and stuff like that and um, you know one that's very poignant to me like i said is the the one at the minor and the diamonds there's one guy yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the two they're one on top of each other 
and one's right at the diamonds and the other is halfway there but he's still you know going away and the other guy's walking away so that one really helped me because and any time I feel like giving up or you know I don't I'm now I'm not going to give up anyway now I'm, I know exactly where I want to go but at that stage that's what I looked at um, and I do that the, the same with kind of when I'm learning kind of leadership and stuff like that I have um, images that I look at and stuff because that just works for me but definitely mindset is just the top tier thing that you need to have right and it takes time Um, I think it was ne- nearly six months when I had that shift of mm-hmm. right this is hell and you know I still definitely will have bad weeks and I'll say oh you know down myself but everybody does and I think I realised that I thought that I was the only one that oh maybe I'm not doing something right but everybody has doubts and everybody you know I think you know goes through that phase uh, yeah, really. the great book that I read about kind of how helped me was a uh, shoe dog um, about the kind of creation and Nike and stuff so it was just that really kind of cemented it um, in my brain that we just have to keep going you know, persistence is key. Keep going, keep learning. Yeah. You know, and admit when you mess up, or admit when you're kind of feeling down, and reach out. Don't feel like you know you're less powerful or you're less kind of you're not a man if you you reach out to someone for help. Help is, is you know, yeah. That's okay. how I dealt with it. Um, you know, it's a bit of a blur. You know, when you think of it, you know, I don't. As right now, I don't feel like I'm any a, a different person to what I was a year ago or two years ago. But when I look back and realize, kind of, you know, when I've started this self development journey and, you know, becoming a, a different type of person, it's crazy when you, you realize what you are now to what you were two years ago. Yeah. You know, so. I I, 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 that one, man. That's, a, that's yeah. a big point right there, I think. Like, for anybody who is, if you're even just starting off or you've been trying this, let's say for the last couple of months and maybe you're not seeing results, like there is going to come that kind of shift where you're going to hit a spot. And like you said, it's not going to be just this overnight point where it just literally goes and it's completely different now. It's going to be a gradual chipping away. And it's that consistency and persistence that it really does push you over that edge. And yeah. you know, if, if you give up on it, it's it's going to give up on you like it's just not going to happen if you don't stay there chipping away every single day and yeah just having that mindset there and like um like that you're never going to have it done in perfectly you know it's it's often the case where if you're watching this right now you're probably thinking like ah that's easy to say once you've gotten a client or that's easy to say when you've got two three clients or if you're making x amount per month but believe it or not like it, it is going to happen to you throughout your journey if you're if you're making 10 20 30k a month it doesn't really matter what that number is you're still going to have like little doubts here and there you're still going to have like these little weak points you know in your mindset and that's completely normal there's definitely days where i'm not super motivated there's days where i'm a little bit off there's, there's a couple of days where i'm thinking oh we're not going to get to that next level and like that's just kind of the thing that happens you know um if you're out there and you don't have those thoughts amazing because you'll probably skyrocket and you'll go really fast yeah. with your journey but for most people you're always going to have those those lows 100 yeah and 100%. yeah that was interesting to see because like that affirmations and things like that they don't work for everyone and again it's really trial and error with all of this stuff whether it's the outreach method that you're using or it's literally how do i stay motivated and on top of everything there's going to be something that works for you and it might not be what worked directly for me or for even you, you know, it's always going to be something slightly different. Um, so it's, it's good to be aware of that, I think, because most people like that, you're trying to fit into that box of maybe I have to start this type of agency. I have to offer this service. I have to, you know, go with this niche. And that's the only option where there's an endless amount of niches you can go into, services you can offer. And the ways you actually go about doing that are completely yeah. different as well. Um, solid, man. So, so. Yeah. Let's say then kind of like moving forward, right? So we've gone through the journey. We've learned all about SMA marketing. We've, we've gotten help, gotten a mentor and all that good stuff. And, yeah. and you had that shift and you're like, no, this is happening. I am staying consistent. I'm going to stick at this and I will make it happen. Like with where you're at right now, where do you see yourself kind of going, I suppose, in the next six months, year with the business? And like, you know, one, one question I like to ask people is like, do you want to 
keep the business at like, let's say a certain revenue mark, or are you kind of looking to keep scaling and keep pushing that as you continue on? Um, definitely, um, or right, six months, you know, again, it's going to be another massive, I'd be a different person mentally again in six months, I'd say, um, I'd learn, you know, you learn every day. I think one thing that's very prevalent in my industry as who I work with is that every day is a school day, you know, and I've taken that from people who say that in, in my job um, with the agency. So my agency at the minute, I do have people who uh, help. I do have, um, you know, a contract and I do have someone else as well that helps with the the, the admin stuff, posts and stuff like that. Um, so really I would like to, you know, scale up with, if, um, kind of get more contractors, get more clients, because I'm very uh, conscious of quality, you know, a quality service. I want to provide the best service I can for my um, my clients. So I have to basically, you know, I have to look at the time that I have to manage clients and the time I have to dedicate to my profession. And um, so, you know, I, I work very well. You know, anybody on my clients are happy that, the service they get um you know i have time in the morning but i get up earlier and then i go to bed late and um, it's not great for the health at the minute but it's a stage that i know i have to go through Um, i would like to start building up a team around me to help me with service delivery Um, you know i do enjoy the calls with um prospects and clients i enjoy interacting with them i make sure that i keep um you know i think customer service is one of my main priorities and um, looking after because um i really do think that you know if you have a solid kind of customer service you know solid um communication with your clients you know they're very kind of receptive to you and if a problem does arise or something comes up you know they're less likely to you know absolutely flip the lid on you basically so if you know you onboarded a client and you onboard them you're taking a monthly fee you're getting a great roi for them and they, you know, something goes wrong and you haven't spoke to them in a couple of months, mm. they're very easily like, you know, they can very easily just get annoyed and, you know, just flip the lid basically. Uh, uh, so I tr contact my um, clients very regularly. I've popped into uh, some um, because they're all Irish based. Um, or you, you know, will be branching out. I'm, I'm gonna do the same in a kind of different way. I'll be on zoom uh, like we are and we're kind of uk clients because i do reach out and i do chat to a lot of uk based businesses Um, so yes within regards to scale and yes i would like to scale up Um, you know i am a big believer i'd like to finish what i started with the apprenticeship i'm very close um, and then i have to sit down with myself my team and my my family as well and just weigh up my options you know and um, this age is something that i really want to scale and you know make a, you know a, build a team around me it's a, a big goal of mine and um i've thought about it kind of every single day and um, it's kind of strange how you just get so engrossed in in the journey and building a business up and i think another thing that is really prevalent to me is uh you know when you're doing this you kind of forget that this is the you know the journey i'm on a journey to building something that you know a business that i've always wanted to build um i've always wanted to be a business owner so it's a huge huge you know achievement and every time you talk you hear or you talk to someone who has a business or who was you know successful there's a many ways you know and many types of successful you know successful in business they talk about this stage that i that i mean the stage of growth the stage of the, the beginning because that's the yeah, yeah. you know it might not seem fun or like when I'm doing it, but I know I look back in a year, two year, and look back at it with fond memories, saying, you know, that was, you know, doggy dog stuff, just yeah. down every day. You know, you know, it's tough. I'm not gonna lie, and it's not like glorious to come home every day and jump into ad accounts and you know, ring people, meetings, and everything. It's it can get overwhelming at times, but it's just you got to take stock of that, what you're trying to do, and um, because. You know, I think when you start building a team and start, you know, giving responsibility to other people, it's 
you know, things can get a bit, uh, you can kind of forget what you've done. Um, so I have a very, very small team around me, which is great. But uh, I think, you know, just definitely scale, definitely build. I want to become a specialist in my service, um, specialist in my niche. I want to be the go-to guy for, you know, um, motor, um, the motor industry. So, like, um, I'm very conscious of, you know, not, I've got lots of people reaching out to me or saying, oh, will you run my ads? And I've been conscious, I've been very tempted to say, yes, I will mm-hmm. run your ads. And if it suits, yes, of course, but if I do know a lot of people who would be in other industries and say, like, we'll go with the fitness industry, if someone reaches out to me and say, oh, I'll have a fitness uh, industry, a gym, I want to open back up, uh, and I want ads ran for a, a deal or whatnot, I will kind of refer them on to someone that is a specialist in that because they know better, they know that niche better than me. I have an advantage because I'm a consumer as well. In my niche, you know, I'm mm-hmm. constantly looking yeah. online, so I have that advantage of knowing how what I look for, what I how I go about things, um, you know. And I think niching down is a um, you know something that you have to do if you're in an age. And I think it's hard to do when you're starting off. Definitely very hard to do it because you're starting off and you think there's this you know a small pool in your niche when you actually your niche is massive, like it's huge. Um, but I think when you're kind of going for that just you know i'll take anyone on sort of approach you can kind of drop your 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 standards really um but it's a quicker process of getting clients you know anyone can jump onto upwork or you know bark or something like that and get a client within a couple of minutes but if you're reaching out constantly to your industry they might not be as receptive to you at the start and then you know after that, then once you get in, you start showing results, you start, you know, doing what you said, it becomes a lot easier to, to kind of niche down. Um, so I niche down from the very start. I didn't reach out to any other, one, any other businesses. I just kind of went with my niche and hit it as hard as I can. And it took long, longer than some people to get their first client. You know, it, it took me a long time to get my first client. So uh, I think that's how... I hope I answered your question with the growth yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I would yeah. like to grow my engine. <laughs> no, <laughs> Go off on a tangent, but that's yeah. good. That's um, good. That's what that's what this is all about, really. Like it's again, just get that insight from yourself as someone who's who's going through it, who's building it up. And yeah, yeah, solid man. Like, and I think that's it's really like you touched on so many key points there. I probably should have wrote them down, but um <laughs> the niche thing, like that, that's so key, right? Like I always say, yeah. if you do you can just start off with like this general niche, but you're just going to create headaches for yourself. You know, you're in that position yeah. first. Like when you have multiple clients in that industry, like that, you're becoming more of a specialist every day. Whereas if yeah. you have multiple clients, they're all in different industries, you're not really becoming a specialist. You're just becoming someone yeah. who can kind of cater to this person and you can cater to this person. But you're never going to be that expert. So yeah. tons of value in that. Um, obviously, like you said, it's a little bit of a slower process, you know, because you're building yourself up as an authority in your industry you're understanding you know how can i get results for that specific business whereas it's easier like you said just hop onto upwork go for anyone and just take them on and that also brings another good point of like scaling slowly is actually like very wise like my agency it didn't really scale slowly at the start it was quite a i guess you call it kind of like a rocket ship growth of like first clients and then 10k a month in 45 days yeah. but that does bring its own set of issues problems and things that you've got to deal with so like yeah. if you're all in on it and you're not working a job you're not in college yes you can experience that growth and you can handle it completely fine but like that if you're in a yeah. scenario where you're trying to balance this alongside something else like there's nothing wrong with taking it slow it's just going to pay you dividends down the line because you'll have yeah. the systems again you'll be a specialist you'll have a team built around you so that you can actually handle the demand once you get that demand. So like really, really key as well that like, you know, scaling fast is, is awesome. It looks cool. It's amazing. Um, it's fun, right? Cause you are yeah. on this kind of journey, but on the flip side, you know, just for people don't glamorize it all the time because it can bring some issues, headaches and things like that. So if you're scaling yeah. slow or even if you don't have a client and you know, it's a slow process so far, don't be ashamed of that. That is completely fine. And yeah, sometimes going slow is actually better in the long run. 
Yeah, 100%. there's a couple other bits you mentioned in there. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of them all now. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, let's see. Niche that was a one. Looking at the scaling, yeah, yeah, cool, solid man. And like, um, I suppose like so for you really like as you mentioned the biggest kind of things were niching down very very key. Yeah. Obviously getting help, you know, and keeping your keeping yourself accountable, all that good stuff. That's quite important. Just keeps you going when yeah. you have those dips. And like, obviously, it seems like you did work quite heavily on the mindset. You were actively trying to look at those things, like you mentioned, affirmations, um, almost like vision boards where you had the screensavers, those constant reminders. Yeah. And like, you know, is there is there anything else then that has has really helped you over, let's say, the last few months? That it's something that you think that most people just kind of overlook or don't really look at. I think um, one thing that a lot of people, not so much overlook, but a lot of people compare. And it's, I think it's the detriment of so many people. Um, and I've done it, like definitely I've compared to, you know, there's people who started after me um, and who are twice as big as me. Um, I'm still relatively small. Um, you know, I think, I know he was comparing and saying, oh, you know, but I'm on a different journey to them. And, someone else looking at the, this video is on a different journey to me and you they can scale up so quick they can scale up slow they can do it at their own pace you know it's just what your kind of your journey basically um comparing is a massive thing and it's something i kind of had to stop doing because i love seeing people do well i think i get such a buzz uh, a friend of mine uh, started after me and she's flying ahead now like yeah, yeah. Has, Oh, she like scales super quick and I'm so happy for her like I'm just she's you know killing it in her niche you know yeah. doing an excellent job and you know I know she'll do you know scale even quicker and grow even bigger so uh, you know but the likes of I was looking at you know you, you engross yourself in a lot of you know SMMA content and you're looking at and all the headlines is like how to scale your agency in 30 days or 10k in 30 days yeah, right, right. you know that's great if you have, you know, 12 hours a day, just flat out all the time. Um, but, you know, some people, whether older or younger than me, some people have other commitments, kids, you know, mortgages, bills, it's a bit of a slower process. I have a commitment to finish an apprenticeship, you know, and, you know, really evaluate what I want to do then. So everybody's different. If your back's against the wall and you start SMMA and you hit it hard and you're like, reach now every day hundreds of companies you know you're gonna scale big in no time even if you're messing up everything you're gonna scale because you know eventually something's gonna click and something's gonna be right um another thing i think that's to overlook this is you know it's not as glamorous as people you know make it out to be as in you know the people in the industry do say oh, i've done this or making this and i'm you know, it's hard and anyone who who has, who has got to that stage has worked hard and has been in the trenches of yeah, bringing yeah. people and, yeah. you know, I think people have a pre, you know, they think when they say, in, oh, I'm going to do this course and then that's going to be my ticket to, you know, I'm going to scale the 10, 10k in three months, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just, you know, you have to do the work. You can have the best course in the world if you don't yourself put in the work you know, you're not going to get anywhere. It's really, I know I had that realization. I was, yeah. you know, saying, oh, I'm going to do this course, it's going to show me everything. The course will never show you everything because there's so much to learn. A course can guide you in the right direction, but you have to take the actionable steps to, you know, say what you're going to do, you know. Exactly. Um, but I think being honest as well, honesty is just the best thing when it comes to, you know, especially people in your community. One thing I was very surprised at is, you know, say people who are in my niche or my competitors say, the first people that are willing to help you, you know, it's just yeah. ridiculous. Like, you know, you think, you like, when you think of yourself, oh, these are never going to help me because I'm trying to, you know, I'm in their niche, I'm in their industry, you know, but they're the first people to say, right, let's do this because, you know, a monopoly is bad. You know, com competition is great. I say it all the time. Yeah. You need competition. Um, every industry needs competition um, it's the exact reason why Bill Gates invested in Apple when it was crashing <laughs> he knew it, he needed competition there. So much smaller 
very smaller scale, but it it's yeah, the exact same. same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so reach out. There's so many good people out there. As I said, nine times out of ten, you're going to get a good guy that will help you out. You know, like yourself, we reached out to you. There was no pitch from you. There was no nothing. There was just genuine help from you saying, listen, you know, you even said to me, if SMMA is not your thing, let me know. I can see if I can help you with other start, you know, other business ideas that I had. And I said, you know what? I had a look. I had a good think about it. There was no pressure from your side. I know there are people who have reached out to me. It's the exact same, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, it was my choice, you know. There was no mad, hard clothes or anything. It was my choice because I wanted to do this, you know. I wanted to build an agency and build a team and, you know, help people, you know. A, a big, you know, when you see results and your, your clients happy, that's better than the pay, like the pay 100%. any day long. Like, cause, you know, you feel great helping people out. They're happy. I'm happy. It's a win-win. You know, and you're building good relationships, good, uh, you know, that will last a long time, even if they're not your clients. You know, I'm very big on a reach out to a company, had a chat, lovely people, and they just genuinely couldn't afford, afford it. And they're kind of new enough. They're... In you, and I just literally sent them a load of gear. I said, Here you go. I said, That'll get you started with just basic marketing. I hope you're, you know, I hope your um, new venture goes well. Keep me in the loop. If you need any questions, reach out to me. I'll do my best to answer. You know, and nice. it just, it wasn't like any groundbreaking, you know, mad strategies. It was just, Here you go. That's to help you out. If you need anything, let me know. You know, there's no, it's, it's all about helping people if you're getting into this for money it's, i think it's the wrong attitude and again hold my hands up i was like i need money you know and i kind of that's when i was looking making an online business i was like oh money money you know that but it's changed it's changed very much so into helping people and the money will come i haven't touched any of the money that i've made from the agency it's been reinvested you know it's there so well, I think once you, you get that click, it's just, you know, once you realize that you're doing it to help people, it's, you know, I know sometimes, again, you're not going to help everybody. Sometimes, if, you know, a client won't mesh well with you or you won't, you know, just get that click and yep. you'll have to, you know, walk away and say, well, okay, look, this is not going to work. We'll have to, you know, move on, you know, and we'll do it in a professional, nice manner because in the end of the day, he wants or she wants more business or you know products to be sold and we want to help them you know, using my service. So that's basically I think again I hope I answered your question. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. 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 Again, load of golden nuggets in that one as well, man. Uh, yeah. I think yeah, what you're saying there of like the money, that's that's definitely a big one because like Yes, SMMA can make you a lot of money. You know, it's it's the kind of thing that you can scale, you can have high profit margins, you can get the team involved, but money as a motivator only gets you so far, right? So like, there's a study out there, you can look it up on Google if you want, but, you know, basically explains that like, after you start making a certain amount of money, the yeah. rest, it literally doesn't mean anything. Like, you might think that the difference between 5K a month and 10K a month or 10K a month and 15K a month is crazy life-changing. It's really not going to change your life too much. It's going to be pretty much the same, you know, when, when you have those little jumps in it. So, like, it really is more the impact side of it and, like, that building a team, building a system, and building something that, again, fits into your goals. Something I see a lot of is, you know, people get, people almost feel pressured that they need to make 10K a month or they need to make 15, 20, whatever it is. It's like, that's fair. I can see why you're falling into that. But everybody else, you know, you have your own goals, right? And someone else who's growing their agency might want it to be like a million per year company. And like, that's fair mm-hmm. enough. That's what's right for them. And that's what they want to do. So like one thing I'd say to anyone watching is like, you know, take stock. Like you said, be honest. Like, what do you actually want? Do you want to make uh, an extra grand a month, two grand a month, three grand a month? What is it? You know, and just be real with like what that is because if you don't want a 10k a month business that you know you're going to have to build a team around you're going to have to have systems or else you're going to be working a lot like then don't scale to that level maybe just go to three four five whatever it is sustain it and make sure it fits in to your lifestyle 
And um, I think that's it's an interesting topic. I'm definitely going to make a, a video about that because I, I know people who have agencies where it's like, you know, seven figures, seven figures and above. But then I know some people where it's like, they've been at the exact same level for the last two years. They have an agency for multiple years and they've stayed somewhere between five and 10K per month. And the reason they have is that it fits their lifestyle. They don't particularly want the huge agency with a ton of people. So um, yeah, basically my ramble on that is find your goal, right? And, and be realistic, like you said as well, be honest, because getting to 10K a month, like it's going to take work. It's not just going to happen. The course or whatever you buy into is not going to do it for you. It'll give you the tools, the resources, and the support you need. But like you said, you have to actually do the work. And um, that's another thing. A lot of people do ask me, like, what's the guarantee? Am I guaranteed to make 5K, 10K a month if I join your program? And it's like, no, not at all. Like, I can't do the work for you. I can give you the tools. I can show you what works for me. I can give you support. Like you said, it's, it's getting stuck in yourself, being honest and like any business, there's no business model that's just going to click, boom, overnight, you're rich. Even if you're looking at crypto right now and you're thinking, boom, I'll throw a bit in crypto and I'm rich overnight, it's probably not going to happen. It might, right? In the odd time, it does happen to yeah. people, but nine times out of 10, it's going to be hard work. And um, obviously, of course, you can work smart, build the systems, build that team. But um, yeah, don't get it twisted, people. You're going you're gonna to have to work. And yeah, I think I think we can probably round it up there, man. I think we covered quite a lot. We went from yeah, the yeah. beginnings, your goals, scaling up, niches, services, and not scaling too fast, a whole lot. So I think there's definitely a lot of value that people will get from this. So again, just want to thank you, Dara, for hopping on. Um, first, for doing the video, but two, for being like such an interactive part of the Six Figure Accelerator community, because you are always giving advice to people in the group. You're always helping people out. And you're pretty much on every weekly call as well, which is which is solid. It's awesome. I love to see you, man. So again, thank you for coming on. And I will speak to you, Dara, in a few days on Monday. And for everyone else yeah. watching, hopefully you did get value. And um, of course, if you want to speak to Dara, learn more about his agency, what he's doing, definitely you know, shoot him a message. If you want to plug your socials, Dara, feel free. And yeah, yeah, leave it there. So, yeah, you can reach me on um my personal Instagram, Dara underscore Ward twenty five, um, or you can reach me on my agency, which is deliverze dot e, um, that's the same for Instagram and Facebook. But again, yeah, reach out to me Facebook, Instagram. You should type in Dara Ward, you'll see me. Um, yeah, so that's uh really I'll reach out to me. I'll happily help um as much as I can. So. <laughs> Perfect. Again, thanks very much for having me, Adam. Really appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs>